Hello there, Carrie here with another Sudoku tutorial. This time I will be looking at an intermediate level puzzle, and here I will present a solving technique which can prove useful when you don't have much luck with scanning. That is a technique I covered in my introductory video. Please check it out if you have not yet done so. So the basis of that strategy was to work with a specific digit and then visually try to find the one cell within a 3x3 box that can accept that digit. In other words, the strategy is pick a number, find the cell, and this video will describe the reverse, which is pick a cell, find the number. I call this strategy lone candidate since the goal is to solve the cell by selecting the only possibility that doesn't immediately create a duplication. While I admittedly prefer scanning, especially when I'm working with a pencil and paper Sudoku, um, I do not hesitate to use this strategy and if you're using computer software you may actually find this the better choice uh, to try to solve your cells. I have solved a few cells to get the puzzle into the stage that you see here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a row, column, or box that has many of its digits already filled in and I will evaluate a particular cell within that unit to see if there is only one number that fits. And for this example I'm going to look at the 3x3 three three box in the top left hand corner. That has five of the nine numbers already filled in which means there are four numbers left to distribute to the four blank cells. However, if there is a cell where three of the four numbers already appear in a row or column, we can narrow that cell down to only one possibility. So in this 3x3 three three box, uh, we are still missing the 1, 3, 6, and 8. However, we may be able to find a row and or column within that box that has a few of our tar target numbers already in it. So we could effectively eliminate some of those possibilities. So I'm going to actually test out this bottom right cell, and I will note the four candidates in smaller numbers to show that they're not actually solutions, but merely the options available to us. And there are the options available because they're the only numbers missing from the 3x3 three three box. And what I'll do is I'll evaluate each candidate one by one to see if it is a possible solution. And I'm going to start by looking at the ones. It turns out that this is not a possible solution because the cell is in a column that already has one and that would create a duplication. So we can eliminate one as a possibility. And now we'll look at the threes, which is also not a possibility because there is a three in its row. We can extend the exact same logic over to the 6 and eliminate that. That leaves only one option available to us that's not going to create a duplication, and that is the 8. It is therefore safe to plug the 8 into that cell. This strategy will also work on a row or column just as effectively. I'll now take a look at this row here. The leftmost box is missing two numbers, a 3 and a 9. However, we don't know which order, so we can at least list the two numbers as candidates in those two cells. Uh, however, the row still has five blanks in it, and the row will be complete once a 1, 2, 3, 7, 9 are assigned to the blank cells. So we'll list all five of those candidates on the cells to the right. In the box, we know the two numbers, however, we don't know if they'll read 3, 9 or 9, 3. But regardless of the order, both of those possibilities will eliminate the chance of a 3 or a 9 appearing in the three cells on the right. So we can eliminate 3 and 9 as options from those cells. I will highlight those eliminations in red, and that leaves the three candidates for those three cells, a 1, a 2, and a 7. That draws our attention to the rightmost column, which has two of the remaining candidates in it, so we can eliminate the two and the seven from the rightmost column. In all, we have successfully eliminated four of the five possibilities in that last cell, and therefore the lone candidate for it is a one. We can safely plug that in. And that wraps up tutorial number two. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you are able to take advantage of these strategies. I plan to do probably two more videos at the intermediate level, and I look forward to hearing your comments and suggestions. I will see you on my next video. Take care, and thank you for watching.